the, even 50 years after Nicaea, a lot of people who accepted that the Father was fully divine and the Son was fully divine and the Son was eternal and begotten, not created, they were still worried about what the status of the Holy Spirit was. There's always a certain um, silence about, or reticence about the Spirit um, until the 4th century. No one quite knows where the Holy Spirit fits in. Obviously, on the one hand, there are these. There is a baptismal formula, and there is this blessing at the end of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, which names the Spirit along with the other two. But there isn't the kind of evidence in the New Testament itself for the distinct personality of the Spirit that you find in the case of the Father and the Son, and there isn't the same evidence of the Spirit being called God. So it took more time for the Spirit to attain that divine rank in the eyes of Christians uh, than it did for the Son to attain that rank. And in fact, even now, in what we call the Nicene Creed, not the Nicene Creed of 325, but the one that was amplified and proclaimed at the Council of Constantinople in 381, that's the one that we now recite in churches, and it doesn't actually say that the Spirit is God. It says that the Spirit is the Lord and the giver of life and that he's worshipped with the Father and the Son. But it seems that you know, the church never actually produced a creedal formula which definitely said that the Spirit was God like the other two. And then, as I said, there's this further problem about the Spirit. So even, in the, even 50 years after Nicaea, a lot of people who accepted that the Father was fully divine and the Son was fully divine and the Son was eternal and begotten, not created, they were still worried about what the status of the Holy Spirit was. Could you actually describe the Holy Spirit as homoousios, consubstantial with the Father and the Son? And the Cappadocian Fathers are the theologians whom we remember as having established this as a belief of the Church. And all of them, somewhere or other, um, Basil of Caesarea, Gregory of Nyssa, and Gregory of Nazianzus, all of them stated somewhere in their writings that the Spirit is homoousios with the Father and the Son. As I say, this didn't actually get even into the revised version of the Nicene Creed, but it is now an acknowledged doctrine of the Church. And so to deny the divinity of the Spirit to be what was then called a, a new Matamachian would also be a heresy. Another point to, that is important to realize over here is that the concept of the Trinity only came up after Christians already accepted the deity of Jesus. It was an effort, a philosophical effort, to justify something they believed already, an absurdity they believed already. To believe a man is God, they had to come up with an idea of the Trinity. It wasn't that they first came up with an idea of the Trinity and that they said, oh, Jesus is the one that fits into the Trinity. Before Jesus came to the world, no one thought of the Trinity. So the Trinity is a, a, an excuse for idolatry.